Good evening, ladies and gents. How are y'all doing today? Um, sorry that the video is so late. Um, I just got off from work and I sat in two hours of traffic to get home. Um, so I thought a good topic would be um, pricing. Um, I know a lot of you may not be certified and you're probably wondering, how, what can I charge? How can I charge? Let me just say this. Do not underprice yourself. Do not underestimate your talent. Um, even though you're not certified, you need to find out the regulations for your state as to if you can charge or not. And if you're doing it under the table, make you a price list as to compare it to a shop, but you go down a little bit. Like if the shop charge, say, 25 for a full set of acrylic long nails, um, then you would do, you would just be like, okay, well, maybe I could charge 20. Some of y'all have good, good, good talent and you're not charging like you should. Rhinestones, Swarovski crystals, acrylic powders, stuff costs. So you have to make sure that you are charging. Like when I do nails, when I wasn't certified, I would still charge regular price because I'm taking my time. I'm doing it. You're allowing me to do it. I don't negotiate my price. Only on some things I would, but I don't negotiate my price. The reason being is when we go to the Asian Asian salons, we do not negotiate with them. We go sit in there, we pick a color, and we tell them what we want, and that's that. At the end of the day, some of y'all, just because they're dressed in white smocks and black pants, some of those people are not even much certified. They are being trained by the family member that owns the shop. So we have to make sure that when we're um, soliciting our own business or we are being self-employed that we are actually making money if it's not benefiting you then you're underestimating your prices and you're not getting paid for what you're supposed to be getting paid for people are going to come to you because you cheap whether you do good work or not they're coming to you because you cheap they may not have the money to pay you so you still have to charge make you a price list put it on your wall when they say oh how much you charge these are my prices and at the bottom put, I will not negotiate. Why? Because they don't negotiate when they go support Asian salons. And let me just say this too. People are going to support who they want. People are going to spend their money with who they want. If you are unprofessional, you, you know, you just downright just rude or you negative or whatever it may be, then you may not, this may not be the type of job for you. Sometimes you have to sit back and revamp. We want to do stuff so bad because we're like, oh, I got it. I got it. But you still need to know what you can and cannot do. Because if you cut a client, like I stated yesterday, if you hurt a client, you can lose badly on the other end. So make sure that when you're charging, you're actually capable of doing the work. Put what you can do and what you can't do, let it go. Make sure that your prices match up. If you live in Florida, look up a nail salon in your area and you make your price list based off of what they got. You don't have to charge like they charging, but you can make your price list similar to theirs to where you can still make money because that's what our goal is to be to get to get paid. So you don't want to have someone come sit in your chair and you giving them a $40 service for $10. No, no ma'am. And they know that it's a get over. So they're going to come. If you using rhinestones, gel top coat, matte top coat, um, glow in the dark top coat, um, you using glitter, you using any type of color powders, that is extra add-ons. That is extra money. Do not solicit yourself to giving people free stuff because then you're gonna become, oh, you did it free last time. So why can I get it free this time? So you have to understand that this is my business, this is my livelihood for some of you. Um, I work a full-time job and I do nails, but I don't have any clients. So what can I do? Okay, start advertising. Do certain promotions like Blue Monday, 10% off any service. You bring a friend, 20% off any service. But you make sure that you're charging to where that 20% is going to benefit you and them. Um, You can have Rhinestone Tuesday where you buy one bling finger, you get another bling finger free. But you make sure that if you're using rhinestones, you charge for rhinestones. But if you're using Swarovski crystals, Swarovski crystals do not lose their luster. They shine. You can reuse them. Then you charge. We have a lot of questions when it comes to doing nails, but we have to start off from the basics. 
We want to do it so bad. We want to make sure we're getting paid. We want criticism. We want this. We want that. But you have to start off with doing it right. If you're going to charge, make sure that you're charging enough that is going to support you, that is going to be able to replace or replenish the liquid, the powder, the nail tips, whatever that you're using. Make sure that you're going to be able to replace or replenish those items because if you don't work, you know, I've seen some people asking for leftover things or whatever. I started off at Amazon and Sally's. Kid you not. I started off cheap. I ordered from China. Some stuff came. Some stuff didn't. I charged that up to the game because nine times out of ten, it's a scam page. And they put pictures up there. So you have to know what you're doing when you're ordering. And make sure that when you're ordering things, it sounds legit. Some things that's 50 cents, a dollar, $2.00. That's most likely it may be a scam. You have to be mindful because there are certain items that you're not going to get for $2 nowhere else. And then you have to know the quality of your products. If you're using Young Nail Powder, Easy Flow Powder, um, any type of expensive acrylic powder, you need to charge because those acrylic powders are not cheap. Especially when you're using Glam & Gliss color, color Powders. Um, you're using Cuccio, you're using um, Jellish, you're using China Glaze. All those things are expensive. So you need to make sure that you're pricing accordingly. Now, you don't want to price something that's way out the map and they can't afford it. But you need to price depends on the area you live and where you live and who com competition you have. Because if you live in the hood, per se, then you have to charge similar to what hood people would want to come. And pay. But if you live in a suburb area and it's a lot of, you know, Caucasians or other ethnic people in your neighborhood, then you need to charge to whereas the shop make money, but I'm a slightly, I'm a five dollar difference. They're gonna wanna come to you, especially if you have good work. And always remember to keep trying. Do not never give up because it takes practice. You will not get this overnight. I'm still learning, and I've been doing it for years. I own and off for years. Let me just say that. I just finished school. I just got licensed. No, I don't know it all, as I will always state. But I can tell you some things based on my knowledge. This is not from no one else. This is from me. You don't have to listen to me. You can do whatever you want to do. But I'm just giving you heads up on things that I've learned because I've lived in multiple states. So I'm giving you heads up on what I've learned. Just know that when you're pricing, make sure that the price fits and the price is right. Do not underestimate your craft. Love you guys. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.